Lost the 100 mile an hour dog, chapter three. The middle of nowhere. What a dark and moonless night. It was a bit creepy, I can tell you. The wind howled and an owl hooted. They are such old ladies owls. All they ever do is go woo hoo, like they're scared of the dark. Why don't they get up during the day when the sun's shining? I'm not scared of the dark at all because Dazzy Donut Dog is not scared of anything. It was eerily quiet, apart from that daft owl. I wandered along a wide empty street with big buildings. They were even bigger than the building I ran into last week by mistake. I'd never seen so many books. I got chased out by three screaming women and one of them tried to hit me with a magazine and I hadn't even done anything. Anyhow, she missed because I am the superest dog at zigzagging and can run like a tornado. The buildings were lit by orange lights and surrounded by tall wire fences. The fences had big signs with pictures on. Sometimes it was a skull and sometimes it was a two legs being struck by lightning and it was making him jump, jump, jump like he was going, ooh, ow, stop it. I knew what those signs meant. They meant danger, keep out. I sat down so I could have a thinking kind of scratch. I scratched behind my right ear and under my chin. I scratched my chest and the top of my head and behind my left ear. Then I scratched in front of my left ear. And the funny thing was, I still didn't know where I was. I thought, this must be a sensible way to do this. What I need to do is start with what I already know. It will be like putting the pieces of a puzzle together. So I started sorting things out like this. Question one, where am I? Answer, I don't know. Question two, which direction is home? Answer, I don't know. Question three, are there any pies left? Answer, I don't know. The van's gone now and anyway, what have pies got to do with finding your way home? Question four, you've ruined it now. You've just asked a question and it was supposed to be an answer. Answer, and now you've given an answer when you were supposed to be asking a question. Question five, will you stop doing things the wrong way round? Answer. Oh, good. That was a proper question. Ask me another. Question six. If you don't know the way home, how can you find out? Answer. Ask someone. Question seven. That's a really good idea. Answer. That isn't a question. That's just conversation. After that, I got tired of talking to myself and decided I really couldn't do anything more until it was morning. So I started to look for somewhere to sleep. I hunted and hunted, but everywhere was just roads and big buildings with hardly any windows and wire fencing. I walked right round to see if there might be a place where I could get in. I came to some enormous gates covered with skulls and people getting hit by lightning and going, Ow! Ooh! Stop it! I sat down and wondered why nobody was allowed in. Anyhow, I was sitting there wondering where I could sleep when all at once two gigantic massive monster mutts as big as rhinoceroses came thundering across and hurled themselves at me from the other side of a chain link fence. Well, I just sat there and looked at them. I mean, what was all that about? Couldn't they see the wire? They clawed at it with their paws and foam was bubbling out their mouths. They rolled their bloodshot eyes and growled like nothing on earth. Honestly, the language they used, it was dreadful. Good evening, I replied, because I think if you're polite, then there's no reason for anyone to get upset. And they said, why don't you go back to your wormhole, you? Oh, really? I answered coolly. Well, the trouble, dear friend, is that I'm afraid you don't have any brains. Oh, you should have seen them. They went crazy mad. They launched themselves at the fence again, roaring and cursing. It was such bad language. I got to my feet and walked up and down in front of them. I say, you chaps, haven't you noticed that there's a four metre high chain link fence between us which you can't get through? What's all the fuss about? You boneheaded clodpods, look at you, all big and muscly and foaming at the mouth and you can't do anything because you're on the other side of the fence, twit poodles. Then I began to copy their barking and went, ooh, woof, woofy, woof. I'm a big bad dog with no brains, woof, woof. They got so mad, they tried to climb up the fence. They did, completely crazy, the pair of them. And then this big fat two legs guard came out of his hut to see what all the fuss was about. He tried to shoo me away by shouting and saying stupid things to me like, go home, you daft dog. And I shouted back at him that I most certainly would go home if only I knew where it was. But of course he couldn't understand me because he was a two legs with small ears. Mr Security was shining his torch in my face and banging the fence with his nightstick and yelling, 
and his two stupid monster mutts kept on barking. They were all so annoying and guess what I did? I was really cool. I went up to the fence right in front of them and piddled through the wire onto Mr Security's boots. Ha ha ha. That was when he opened the gates and let his dogs out. Oops.